All right, we are now ready to start printing. A couple of things is because I'm going to be using the oil, it's vegetable oil, but still, I'm gonna wear a glove. It's good practice. I have a little bit of a shop towel. I have other shop towels that I have folded so that they are ready for me to grab and use. They're right here. I have my plate. We had processed it. We had buffed the gum. It has sat. I have my ink rolled out. I have paper. I have my bowls. I have my sponges. I am ready. Our press is a bone folder. And I will show you the proper way to hold this to make your life easier. But this works really slick. All right. First thing is some vegetable oil, cheap, whatever you got is good. You're going to want to put a little bit directly on the plate. Notice a little bit. Take part of a shop towel and you're going to massage. The oil will dissolve the drawing material. There you go. Then I'm going to flip this over. And remove a little bit more. Get that. And that is on an angle, if you can see it, you will just barely be able to see the drawing. It'll look like a negative. This is going in the trash. Then I'm going to take another shop towel. And I'm going to dampen it with water. I'm going to take this and go around the margins. And then I'm gonna go over the image just to get up all of that. If not all of your drawing materials came out, put a little bit more oil on and take another shop towel and massage that in with the water, oil and water all together there. And then rinse with water one more time and you'll be all set. And if you look here, I might even do that just to be on the safe side. A Little bit of oil, just a little bit. I'm gonna do that with the water that gets everything out. That goes in the trash. And one more, just to make sure I have no oil left because I don't wanna get it in my sponges. But that way, one of my sponges is a little bit more wet than the other. You can see the water beating off on the image area. And then, I'm gonna set my oil out of the way. I'm gonna take off my glove and save it for when I'm ready to clean up. Yeah, there we go. And wet sponge. Yeah. Dry sponge. Oops, I might swap these out. And, and then immediately, and don't roll too long. Notice how thin that is, that's okay. Let me swap these. Wet sponge, dry sponge, flip it one more time, there you go, and short and quick. Now, the image is bigger than my roller. If I just keep going like this, I'm gonna get a light line, which is the lap mark of my uh, brayer. So you need to mix it up a little bit. And I'm gonna show you how to do corner rolls here soon, but for right now, there we go, look at that. I'm gonna give it one more and we'll pull our first newsprint and it should be light, that's okay. We're putting a base in there. Look at all those tones. There we go. This gets set down on its frame over on its ink slab and I do another, just a dry sponge. That'll work. It's staying more than wet enough. I'm going to grab one newsprint and put that down. And I'm going to grab a second newsprint and that's my backing one. Now with the bone holder, you want to hold it like this with one finger forward like this, so that you're using the flat. If you're left-handed, like that. Does that make sense? Then I'm going to start in the center of my image, and I'm on a slight angle, but 
push out. It's kind of like when you stretch fabric or for furniture or for a canvas, you start in the center and work your way out. And then I'm gonna go in circles. The reason I like the bone folder instead of a spoon is it gives a broad, flat base, so I'm not dealing with just a single point of uh, contact. So it's a little easier to avoid burnishing marks. I'm pushing down, but it's more down, not a shove or a pull. There we go. There we go. This goes back. And it's your first one. Not bad at all. All right, so there's that. Then, bone folder down, wet sponge, charge your roller. You're gonna give it a snap inking. Dry sponge. There you go, short and quick. Then, for this, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of ink, tiny bit of ink to my slab and work that in. And again, stay in a nice, neat slab. Now, you always need to remember wet sponge and then dry sponge. If it's staying really wet, you can dry sponge it without the wet sponge, but if it's too dry and you dry roll, you're gonna have a mess. I'm gonna do what are called corner rolls. So I'm gonna start at this corner and I'm gonna go up and back and I'm gonna keep going around. This allows me to not worry about those roller marks and it allows me to get even coverage for an image that is bigger than my roller. And I'm doing this one. Right, there you go. There's that second corner. Now I'm gonna start over here. And I'm gonna go here, up and back, and everything goes back to that corner. If you can do corner rolls with a brayer, you can do them with just about anything, and that means you know how to print larger things, not just this. And this is gonna be and it's sliding a little bit, That my rare sliding a little bit, that means I'm keeping it maybe a little too wet. There we go. That goes down on its frame. Final wet sponge, dry sponge. And I'm gonna do another newsprint. One more newsprint, I think. Okay, so that's gonna go down. I'm using the same one I used before for my backing sheet. Again, hold it with the finger out, hold here, push, and I'm using kind of the back of my hand here, the fleshy part of my back side of my palm to kind of help apply a little bit of pressure. And once I've got it down, then I do this. Circles, and yep, there's enough ink to hold the printing sheet down, and you notice this turns. I don't try and keep it from turning. I don't care. And you can kind of change direction. There we go. Now, when I pull this off, look at that. That's pretty good. Now, I haven't pulled it all the way off. I'm keeping my hand here if, you, if this were a good sheet and you were really like, oh my gosh, that's not quite even, you could just use the front part of your bone folder for here just a little bit of extra focus for a dark area if you really need it so you don't have to work quite so hard. And look at that, okay? That's pretty amazing. Now, this comes off, and bone folder down, nice and neat. A little extra water. Notice I'm not flooding my whole work area. I'm keeping it all contained and neat. I'm gonna charge my rayer. I'm gonna do a dry sponge, and I'm gonna give, this is my snap inking. Okay, 
There you go, short and quick. And then I can look at my print, which was pretty good. And I would say that's pretty much up. I have a range of tones. That number five pencil, that was very light and hard for us to see. You can see it came up light, but this is very much there. Now this ink is very transparent, but it's still, that's your solid, you've got it. I'm gonna do one on good paper on the Kozo we have. So what I'm gonna need to do is charge my roller, and I think I have enough ink on here. There's still quite a bit there. Yeah, I think I can print another one before I need to add in more ink to the slab. So I'm gonna wet sponge. I'm gonna squeeze out my dry sponge so it's not quite so slippery. And look, no scum. I'm gonna do my corners. And you notice it's wet enough, I don't even have to worry. I can go a little bit slower. I don't have to go quite so fast. You still, you don't wanna roll where it's dry, but as long as it's staying damp, you're good. Now, if you live in a drier climate, then you might wanna be a little bit more careful. All right, because you don't want your non-image areas to dry. If your non-image areas dry out and you roll over it with your ink, you're gonna get ink everywhere, which is great if you're looking to monotype, not so good if you're looking to pull consistent prints. You can see that tablet print is printing beautifully. It's all great. Your mantra wants to be wet sponge, dry sponge, roll. You don't want to sponge and then charge your roller because the plate would be drying out while you were charging your roller. There we go. Final sponge. Now, I'm going to take a good sheet. Now, if I had registration marks on here, that would be line up your center mark and up to your T and down. But I don't, so we're going to just go with the tried and true method of eyeballing it and again my backing sheet this hole start in the center work your way out there we go and then yep i have a little something from the newsprint there you go And you wanna go basically evenly, so across, up and down. And I just do mostly circles to avoid too much general, you know, motions, but you can go back and forth. There we go. And then, oops, see, and if you think you missed a little bit, go back. And with the thinner papers, you can see through the back. And isn't that nice? Because then you can see if you've missed something. And then, again, you can use the flat if you feel you need to go a little bit darker. And so here, I'm going to, I wouldn't do the whole thing directly on the back of the paper because it's a little fragile. And with the newsprint on the back, you can really just go at it. And so if you have little miscellaneous things here and there, you don't have to worry about it. But this way you get, you can just focus on just your darks. And this is our first one on good paper, so it might not be perfect. The next one on good paper should be much better. And you can, as long as I hold this back here, I can peel this up and I can see what I've got here. And I'm gonna to wanna to add a little more ink to my slab for the next one. Yeah. There we go. I might even wanna darken my ink a little bit. There we go. So. That's our first one on good paper. Now I'm gonna ink it up again. The next one should be better, but I need more ink on my slab. So first thing I do, wet sponge, 
dry sponge. I'm gonna give it a, that snap roll. Dry sponge. That's in case you are getting scum and you could then have a little ink to protect the image and then you would go in with lemon juice to remove the scum followed by, for a minute or two, followed by gum arabic. And you can use lemon juice and even a Q-tip to clean up a few minor details. Um, all right. Let's add, this is a very light transparent ink. I should put something a little bit different. All right, let's try one more and see where we are. Wet sponge, dry sponge. There we go. That's a better amount of ink. Wet sponge, dry sponge. give it one more little feather roll just to make sure I've got my darks where I want them. So that's going to be, there we go. Look at that. There we go. There we go. And When your backing newsprint starts getting really worn out, just swap to a new one. You could also use wax paper for the backing. Um, that'll also work. I just, newsprint's cheap, easy, I have it, and I don't worry about it transferring a residue in case I decide I wanna do chincole with this after the fact. see this and each paper will act a little differently some of the thinner uh, papers will take the ink very quickly others you'll need to adjust and might need to give an extra inking in order to get it just where you want it um, everything has a moment of the answer being it depends however How's that? Look at that. And that is our image. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. That down. Water. Dry sponge. And my snap. There we go. So I had needed a little more ink uh, and that extra inking in order to get it just where it really should be for this ink, which is a transparent light ink. But that is all of your tones. Now, if I wanted to print five more of these, I would repeat. I did the snap, four corners plus an extra, and I would print another one. And then probably I would add a little bit more ink for the next one after that. Because as you use your ink off the slab, you're going, you know, with printing, you need to replenish it. 
you have to print enough in order to see. If you do everything the same and the next one shows up a little lighter, you know, oh, you should have added ink that time. So you always wanna give yourself a few extras or use the, the light ones for monotyping or for, uh, you know, experimenting with drawing on top, et cetera. But that is, that is your litho from foil, your lemon etch. Now, if I wanted to save this, I could dry it, uh, put the flour on and put gum and buff with cheesecloth again. The problem is, is I would keep it on the foil. If you're done printing it, you take it off the foil and you just don't worry about it, all right? Once you take it off the foil, you aren't really going to want to fuss with trying to get it back onto another foil. It is not worth it, all right? Also, we cannot add to this. I can't decide who I want to add here. If you want to add here to your image, you trace this, trace it onto a new foil that's on a new, a different piece of plexi or take this one off and print it on and you would draw your next layer, all right? We, we aren't going to be counter etching this and adding to this foil. It's just not worth the pain and aggravation and it does not work well, all right? Does not, but that's pretty good. <laughs>